A U.S. military helicopter crashed near the southern border killing two soldiers and a U.S. Border Patrol agent, according to a statement from the military. Another soldier was injured in the incident, the helicopter crashed near Rio Grande City and was assigned to the federal government's border security mission at the time of the incident. A statement by the Joint Task Force North said the crash happened while the helicopter was conducting aviation operations. According to Star County Judge Eloy Vera, the plane carried three male and one female soldier, Texas Department of Public Safety South Regional Director Victor Escalon was quoted as saying by media that the crash involved a military helicopter on federal orders working with Border Patrol. The soldiers killed in the crash were U.S. National Guardsmen, according to the military. The UH-72 Lakota helicopter assigned to the Federal Southwest Border Support Mission was conducting aviation operations near Rio Grande City, Texas, the statement said, the cause of the crash is under investigation, the statement said, the helicopter was following migrants before it crashed in an open field. Star County Judge Eloy Vera told CNN. A person in critical condition was sent to McAllen Medical Center in McAllen, Texas, Vera said. County officials were waiting on federal authorities to get to town so they can start the investigation, he added, sources from the Border Patrol were quoted as saying by Fox News that members of a Mexican cartel were monitoring the helicopter with one of their drones when it crashed. Russia prepares for war against Armenia, Kremlin declares that West turned Yerevan into Ukraine. Armenia deserves to live in peace and under no circumstances should it become an object of trade in the hands of unscrupulous Western politicians. Maria Zakharova, the official representative of the Russian Foreign Ministry, said this while commenting on the reproachment between Yerevan and the European Union. She said that they made similar promises to Ukraine and then abandoned it. This country deserves to live in peace and under no circumstances should it become an object of trade in the hands of unscrupulous Western politicians. Russia sincerely wishes peace to Armenia. We wish this state peace, stability and prosperity both from the point of view of love for this country and people and the point of view of pragmatism because the prosperity of the region as a whole depends on it. Unfortunately, the West played with Ukraine, then broke it, threw Kyiv into the corner like a toy without arms and legs, and started looking for a new victim. Let Armenia not be this new victim who is deceived and tempted, she added. Zakharova noted that some Armenian figures see the increased intention of the EU as a solution to the problem. You need to look deeper. It is also characteristic of the white man who shows the mirror and exchanges with it the most valuable things owned by the natives. Unfortunately, several political figures of Armenia do not think that the country has become a tool and entertainment of Western geopolitics. Arman Grigorian, Secretary of the Security Council of Armenia, said that Armenia has sent an official letter to Russia regarding the withdrawal of Russian border guards from Zavartnots airport. The government's position is that Armenian border troops should serve at the airport he said. But Press Secretary of Russian President Dmitry Peskov noted that Russia is not aware of any decision by Yerevan regarding the withdrawal of Russian border guards from Zvartnots airport. As for the border guards in Zvartnots, as far as we understand, there has been no decision on this issue. No one communicated these decisions to us through official channels. We were in all directions within the framework of the CIS and EU structures at the level of the bilateral relations, he said. It should be recalled that Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said that the presence of Russian border guards at Zvardnots airport is not regulated by any agreement. After that, the Armenians who staged an action chanted insulting slogans against Russia and demanded that the Russian border guards reject Zvardnots. <laughs> Turkey is starting new military operations in Iraq, Erdogan announced. Turkey will continue its fight against terrorism decisively and is poised to resolve problems stemming from the PKK's terrorist presence in northern Iraq this summer. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has vowed, we are about 
to complete the security circle to secure our Iraqi border. We will permanently resolve the matter concerning our Iraqi border this summer. Erdogan said, we maintain our will to create a 30-40 kilometers deep security corridor along our Syrian border. We are determined to fill with new steps the gaps in this corridor, part of which we have already established with our previous operations, the president said. The writer of Hurriyet newspaper, Abdul Qadir Selvi, announced some details about the military operations to be carried out by the Turkish army. He said that first, a large-scale ground operation will be carried out in the region where the claw lock operation was conducted and an agreement was reached with the Iraqi central government controlled by the Barzani family and the administration of Erbil. Prior to the operation, strengthening of temporary and permanent base areas in the region continues. Terrorist nests within the border of the claw lock will be destroyed by air support operations. The length of the border between Turkey and Iraq is 378 kilometers. It will be implemented with the operation. The lock against terrorism will be closed on our entire 378 kilometer border. The borderline will be reached, including the Kara region, famous for its caves. Caves and shelters belonging to the terrorist organization were destroyed in Gara. But this region will be permanently monitored so that the terrorist organization does not use it again. The caves in the Clawlock area will be cleaned and destroyed. Point operations will be carried out in Gara district, the author noted. Abdul Qadir Selvi emphasized that, as in Syria, a safe line with a length of 378 kilometers and a depth of 40 kilometers will be created on the Iraqi border of Turkey. The Turkish armed forces will carry out a lockdown operation. The Iraqi central government and Erbil are expected to provide intelligence support as well as take action against the PKK in Sulaymaniyah and Sinjar. In addition, while Turkey is preparing for the operation in Iraq, diplomacy in Syria will be given importance. The PKK has its main headquarters and training facilities in northern Iraq, from where it tries to infiltrate Turkish territories to attack security forces and civilians. The Turkish government has been actively trying to eliminate the PKK presence in northern Iraq and in northern Syria through operations.